First things first, happy Veterans Day to all of you guys who are actively serving or have served in the military in the past. It is because of you guys that I have got the privilege to sit here every day and say whatever I want. It's because of you guys that I can safely walk my dogs through the neighborhood at night. You guys in the military and you girls... You are not paid nearly enough considering the sacrifices that both you and your families have to make. Soon, we're going to have NBA players in this country making $100 million a year. While we have men and women in our military fighting on the front lines, and they're not close to making $100,000 a year. You know, in my opinion, every day should be Veterans Day. We've got multiple days throughout the year. Hell, we have an entire month where the mainstream media wants us to celebrate identifiers who made the courageous decision to wake up one morning choosing to identify as a bearded babe named Wade. At minimum. There are 30 days every year that are set aside to celebrate gender identity. And we have one day to celebrate the military. One? I think I speak on behalf of everyone in my audience when I say, we appreciate you. We appreciate your service, your sacrifice. And if you're in the military and you haven't subscribed to my channel, what the hell are you waiting for? Quit wasting your time allowing yourself to be indoctrinated by the mainstream media. Get your news from someone who actually respects and appreciates you. After you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button on this video. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Link to the second channel in the description below. This morning on the second channel, we talked about the disaster in New Orleans, along with the beginning of the end of Zion Williamson's NBA career. Yesterday, we talked about the resentment between Stephen A. Smith and Pat McAfee. So if you haven't subscribed to the second channel, click the link in the description below and head on over there and subscribe. Over the weekend, the emotional meltdowns, the incessant whining and complaining, and the blaming It all continued throughout the woke media. They are trying to find someone, anyone to blame for the fact that cackling Cam Harris was a huge embarrassing failure. Now my inside sources, they are telling me that cackling Cam is the heavy favorite this year to win the second annual huge embarrassing failure awards. Will Cam be able to dethrone Johnny B. Biden who is the current reigning, defending, undisputed champ of embarrassing failure? You guys will decide next month when we host the second annual HEF Awards. But anyway, the media is trying to find anyone to blame for Cam losing the election. Ironically enough, I have yet to see the mainstream media blame themselves. They are pointing their brooms at everyone except the one group responsible for losing this election. The wicked weave, Joy Reid, she is blaming Latino men. The Yentas on The View, they are riding the same bruise caboose. Sun host and spent the week last week blaming Latino men for Cam Harris losing the election. When the great pretender Alyssa the Farah Griffin tried to explain to Asuncion why Latino men voted for the Trumper. Sun host and immediately shifted the blame to mythical racism and misogyny. Strong Hispanic men refused to vote for Cam because she's a woman. No, men refused to vote for Cam because she has no idea how to fix the economy. I know the media doesn't like to admit this, but men are providers. It's the man's job to provide for his family. There is no feeling more emasculating for a man than the feeling he gets after he busts his ass every day, working 70, 80 hours a week, and it's still not enough. Even with overtime, his wages can't keep up with inflation. If you want to know why millions of black men, millions of Latino men voted for the Trumper, I just gave you the reason. You can float theories of mythical racism. You can create fantasies of misogyny. You can paint the white man, or in this case, the orange man. You can paint the Trumper as the enemy. But there is one color that unifies men of all races. Green. Money. 
Over the weekend, some unknown dude named Fareed Zakaria, who's one of the dozens of unknowns collecting woke welfare at CNN. Over the weekend, Fareed completely dismantled the deacons at Woke United Methodist. He went on a blistering seven-minute rant where he blamed the huge embarrassing failure of Cam Harris on deacons at Woke United Methodist. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, who in the hell is Fareed Zakaria? Fareed hosts a weekend show on CNN called Fareed Zakaria GPS. Now, I have never watched this polished turd, so I have no idea what GPS means. With this being CNN, it's entirely possible that GPS stands for Gender Picking Services. Hey there, kids! It's me, Fareed! On today's episode of GPS, we're going to take a walk down Sesame Street and select our own gender. If you aspire to have a set of lemons, check the box next to Donnie that says boy. If you want a set of melons, shave that beard and select girl. If you're still undecided, check the box next to the man named Quentin who's waving as he questions his identity. Remember, kids, gender is fluid. If you don't like your selection, you can always change it tomorrow. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not the only one who doesn't watch Fareed Zakaria. The week before the election, he drew a cool 440,000 viewers, which is very unfortunate because it means that very few people saw the episode last night where he completely torch the Deacons. Fareed Zakaria highlighted three reasons that Cam Harris lost the election. Number one, illegal immigration. Now, obviously, Fareed is not allowed to use that term at CNN, so he simply referred to it as problems on the southern border. Number two, he blamed Democrats for weaponizing the justice system in a desperate attempt to put the Trumper in prison, which, by the way, some in the media are now claiming that Donnie Trump is going to run the country like Donnie Brasco. Over the weekend, I saw some doofus in the media claim, I'm so scared. Donnie is going to run the country like the mafia. Oh, Myrta, La Cosa Nostra. Sammy the Bull will be running the FBI. John Gotti will be the commissioner of toxic masculinity. This is so terrifying. As ridiculous as it sounds, maybe there will be some similarities between the mafia and the Trump administration. You know what mob-controlled neighborhoods mostly had in common? Law and order. You didn't assault women in mob-controlled neighborhoods. If you did, you would be taking a ride in the trunk of a Cadillac and your face would be on the side of a milk carton. Maybe that's one thing that the Trumper will have in common with the Mafia. He is promising to return America to law and order. Number three, Fareed Zakaria blamed identity politics and the woke fungus, which are two things that were relentlessly promoted the last four years by the mainstream media. Watch it for yourself. The first big error was the Biden administration's blindness to the collapse of the immigration system and the chaos at the border. Instead of shutting it down, liberals branded anyone protesting as heartless and racist. When Kamala Harris went on The View and was asked how she would have differed from Biden, instead of basically saying nothing different, she should have said, I would have shut down the border early and hard. The second error was an overzealous misuse of law to punish Trump. The most egregious of the cases pursued was Alvin Bragg's one in New York, one that even he was once skeptical of, but was reportedly pressured by some on the left into pursuing. It's worth noting that in this week's election, a CNN exit poll found that among those who believe that democracy in the U.S. is threatened, a majority supported Trump. Lawfare turned Trump from being a loser into a victim. The final error is a more diffuse one, the dominance of identity politics on the left which made it push for all kinds of DEI policies that largely came out of the urban academic bubble, but alienated many mainstream voters. There's an irony in claiming to be pro-Latino by insisting that people use the term Latinx only to discover that Latinos themselves think the word is weird. 
You know what's ironic? Throughout the four years of misery with Johnny B. Biden, the mainstream media never wanted to talk about immigration. In the rare cases that they mentioned immigration, the media would lie to us. The media tried to pretend that it wasn't a problem. Don't worry. We don't have a problem with illegal immigration. These people are simply accepting invitations to the party that Cam invited them to. Don't believe these lies that they are staying at the Four Seasons. That hotel was eliminated by climate change. There's only one season now. Now, and it's nowhere near as luxurious. Cam Harris loses the election and all of a sudden, the media suddenly wants to talk about immigration. Hmm. Strange. But Fareed Zakaria is right. The three reasons that he provided, they definitely played a part in Cam Harris losing, especially identity politics. Towards the end of the clip, he mentioned that ridiculous term, Latinx. I think that's how you say it, Latinx. I used to say Latin X because I never knew how to pronounce it or what the fuck it was supposed to mean. To be honest with you, I had forgotten about the term because no one ever used it. The only people that used it were in the mainstream media and they tried to make it part of everyday vernacular for about three, maybe four weeks. Problem was, no one bit into the shit sandwich. Why? Because Latin men, Latin women, they refuse to be labeled with that word. Fareed Zakaria, though, he missed the number one reason that Cam Harris lost the election. He can blame the disaster at the border. He can blame Cam for not distancing herself from Johnny B. Biden. Fareed can shake his magic GPS and blame the woke fungus. He can blame the deacons for turning Trump into the ultimate victim and making him relatable to minority communities. All that's fine. All that's fine. All that definitely played a role in Cam Harris losing, but... I noticed that Fareed Zakaria conveniently failed to blame the one group that is more responsible than anyone else for Cam Harris losing. I noticed that Fareed and his GPS failed to blame the media. Like I told you guys last week, Cam Harris was not the biggest loser in this election. Biggest loser last week? The mainstream media. Didn't matter who Democrats selected to run against the Trumper. They could have kept John Biden. They could have selected Gabby Newsom, the failed governor of the People's Republic of California. Hell, they could have pushed for Barry Obama to serve a third term. The opponent didn't matter because losing was the only option. There was no way to overcome four years of misery. There was no way to overcome four years of the mainstream media lying to the American people. There was no way to overcome four years of propaganda, four years of attempted indoctrination, four years of the media pushing the false narrative that America is racist. This election... It was a clear message to the media. No matter who the media selected as their candidate, they were going to lose. But give me your thoughts on this. Fareed Zakaria and CNN destroy the woke fungus and blames woke politics for Cam Harris losing the election. Is it too little too late for CNN? They finally got someone at their network who's willing to be somewhat honest. Problem is, no one is watching. Are you surprised that CNN blamed the fungus for Cam Harris losing? Are you surprised that the mainstream media has failed to blame themselves? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Best way to contact me is through email, btlkc84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys later.